And then as an investor standpoint, it made a lot more sense to us to do all the big items and put everything into the, into the remodel and refinance it and amortize it over 20 years. Hey, Rent to Retires, it's Adam Schrader here with another episode, joined as usual by the founder and CEO of Rent to Retirement, Zach Lee Master. And today we are go- going to be talking with Mark. He is uh, one of our local team leaders in the uh, Oklahoma area, specifically around Tulsa. And we're going to talk a little bit about that market today because we haven't touched on it before. So, Mark, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. So, tell us a little bit about you know, how you got started in the actual, you know, real estate space and then why you, I mean, you're in Oklahoma. Why, why did you stay in that area and why did you choose that area where, where you are? So I, I started all the way back in 2005 with Robert Allen and his no money down system. Um, and I, we started doing heavy flips in 2012, 2013, and we started running construction and I built a construction company to support my flipping habit. Um, and then we then we ran into the problem is we we're making too much money. So we started building a rental portfolio. So I had so we had um, <clears throat> some tax shelter from the cap- uh, capital gains. So we and we evolved and going through these seminars and these trainings. And we got to the point that we were remodeling houses faster than we could refinance them. And then um, some of the partnership sort of had changed. So we needed to. um, um divest part of the portfolio for for partnership for, for cash out purposes and that's where we discovered the the, the turnkey environment um, we like oklahoma one it's home it's close it's my backyard two we're very affordable we're one of the more affordable places and if you look for investments we don't have hyperinflation we don't have we don't we don't go up real fast we don't drop real fast we're, we're, we're slow and steady we're right in the middle of the country um, if you look at your price your median prices were significantly lower but yet we're still collecting rents so you know we you look at number one reason uh, is numbers I can get more returns on my rentals here than I can in most markets, especially your hyper markets. You go down to Dallas and it's not even the same game. You're just hoping for appreciation. We, uh, Mark, we like the markets. Um, I mean, you don't have to convince us, right? We obviously already did our due diligence in, in like the area. And then obviously finding good operators like you in the area are, are important. Um, but some people, I mean, we, we get this a lot. It's just some of these markets like, well, what, what does Oklahoma have? I mean, generally speaking, we, it's got to check all these boxes. Has to have landlord friendly legislation. I mean, Correct. you can't have you can't have a tenant that you know, squats in your house for a year and you can't get them out, right? Like that that's a problem. So we don't we don't want to have those those problems. Um, we want to be in areas that have favorable tax structures, low real estate taxes, are business friendly, have a diversity of industries, and have a growing economy. Let's talk about that last part, though. Um, specifically, who are some of the major employers? In, in the areas, um, what kind of economic drivers are there? How can someone feel confident that, that jobs are coming to this area and that their house is gonna stay rented? So um, oil is our, our biggest industry. We also have a lot of uh, communication, telecommunication. There's a lot of aviation. We have uh, the Spartan is the, uh, the aeronautics school. We have uh, Amazon and Google and um, we have Oh, man, there's there's so much industry here. There's a lot of diversity. I, I, so oil's big, but it's not just oil, right? It's not just it, oil. No, it, oil is what it is <laughs> what started us. Um, honestly, I think we have more tech now than we do oil. I mean, there's big aviation. There's big. There get a lot of call center concentration. You have Mid America. There's a lot of industrial work. Amazingly, there there is a a, a big variety of options available. So not exactly what a lot of people think of whenever they think of Oklahoma. <laughs> not the the stereotype so tell us a little bit about um you know why are you the the stuff that you're bringing us is is build to rent why did you move into the build to rent space i mean you mentioned you had the flipping business that was going on but why why have you stayed in the build to rent uh space we 
we like to adjust and adapt. You know, I, I, I'm not a big fan of, of competing against all the investors in town. So, you know, when, when flipping got oversaturated, we went, we went to North Tulsa and we were doing rentals and then we started selling the turnkey rentals. And now um, because inventory and a lot of it is inventory, it's like, it's, there's so much competition. You have a, a hundred, you have hundreds of these wholesalers that are just going out there and they're paying stupid prices for things. It's just not, it's not, the the inventory to buy existing structures that were really worth it dried up and then we 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 in order for us to operate we we did a lot of full gut remodels and then having owning and operating uh, we have 172 doors still in service and we we we, we still make we still hold on to and we manage all these things so from a management standpoint i don't like service i don't like having to fix things in capital it and it and then as an investor standpoint, it made a lot more sense to us to do all the big items and put everything into the into the remodel and refinance it, amortize it over 20 years. So we we were buying full gut remodels and then we were still having variables behind the wall. So the, the solution to it was, well, if we put the walls there, there's nothing behind the walls to find, right? And then uh, the other thing is no one was buying lots and we like infill lots. Um, I, we're not in the development. We've done some development. Uh, engineers are not really user friendly. We're, we don't speak the same language. It, it, it just, it's a very long and drawn out process. It's very profitable, but it, it is time consuming. We're talking years versus months. So we like infill lots. So no one bought infill lots. So we went out and bought a hundred lots, and you know now we just have now we're just working through inventory at this point. Let's let's define that real quick on what an infill lot is. I mean, this is actually where we we prefer infill lots over com like full community developments. Um, and I think there's that's kind of a unique niche as well. Most of the new construction we see and in, in participate in throughout the country are infill lots, where you know it's you may it's already in an established community. You may have multiple houses around a vacant lot that then you go and it's, it's already pre-parceled out. You go and buy it and build it. Right. Is, is that what you right. mean by infill lots? Infill lots, they're existing neighborhoods. Um, they're yes, they're in there's structures, there's houses around it. Typically at some point the house was torn down or we'll, we'll buy a burnouts and we'll tear them down to the ground or if they're on the demo list, but we'll tear down the houses. We'll build new houses. We like the infill lots because we have the construction process down. We can build a house from, from a permit to CO in, in about 100, 100 to 120 days. Um, so we can do it in a little less than four months. Now, the variable and what gets expensive is infrastructure. So we need the utilities. I need water line, sewer line access, and to make sure we can get power to it. Um, we per per first personally don't like gas and gas companies, so it's easier to run total electric 200 amp services. So as long as we have, say, the utilities, it makes our life so much easier. Like we can go and throw a house up in a matter of months. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the neighborhoods that you're building in, because I know the, the stuff you're bringing us right now, they're, they're duplexes. Are these primarily, um, you know, are they renter heavy areas? Are they owner occupied heavy areas? What, you know, who are your tenants? Um, are, are they the oil and gas workers or kind of who? Tell us about the area. So we we work all over the Tulsa metro. These are in Sand Springs. These are on the west side of Tulsa reason that we're operating over there is because the the, the, the town is very user friendly. They they're wanting the housing, they're wanting um they've, they've been very helpful in, in also uh directing us in through the permitting process, the zoning process. And we've started single family and as the rates went up it just made more sense to switch to duplexes and you know, because we've always tailored to or prefer to sell to investor uh, buyers versus owner occupants or even retail buyers. So um, we we go in the areas that a they're growing. You know the issue with Pulse itself is it's a capacity. So you you, you have to go out to the suburbs. And the other thing about um, the, the school districts um, when for whatever reason Tulsa Public is not the best rated, but if you go outside of town, you go to Broken Arrow, you go to Quita, you go to Sand Springs, you go to Sepulpa, you go to Union, you go to Jinx, these are all good school districts. Um, we do work on the south side 
uh, when possible, but the land is so much more expensive that it's really hard to make the numbers work. So we, we, we have a delicate balance between where uh, it's affordable to build where people want to be. What is, um, let's talk about general numbers. Like what's, we, we like new construction. We, we like the area because it's, it's affordable. You can actually have positive cash flow, and for all the other reasons we talked about, um, and we feel confident about it being a long-term investment. But give us give us some general numbers. Um, you know, these don't have to be exact. But like, what are you talking about for single family, for a duplex, for new construction? What are price points? What are rents? Just give us an idea of what what people can expect. Because in a lot of areas that we like, one of the challenges with new construction is it's in most parts of the country it's so expensive that like you can't cash flow, and you have to solely bet on appreciation, which is always a challenging bet right so yeah it makes it less exciting um so you know as far as cash flow that the existing structures probably do have better numbers in the new construction but the difference is the capex for the long term uh, everything is new now we are we're when we started we had a four bedroom two bath 1500 square foot house or we rented for it or when we, we've evolved when we first started, you know, these were $160,000, $180,000 houses. But as we went through the COVID spike, now the appraisals are up, you know, the, the material costs dramatically increased, but the values went up along with it. So that $180,000 house now appraises for two twenty, dollars And we were renting $1,500, but now we're renting them for $1,800 for the four bed, two bath, the new construction. Um, we, we actually rented several of them for $2,000, which I was really surprised. Um, just because we've been renting for well over a decade and just watching how dramatically the rents have increased over the last three to five years. You know, what, what used to rent for 800 now rents for 1200 and, you know, even fair market rent on these things is in, you know, mid, you know, mid sixteens. And, but there's, so there's not a lot of new construction, nice new rentals available. So we're able to push that up and get, you know, that 1800, 2000 on, um, the houses range or in the low to mid twos, depending on what neighborhood we're in. Now we had to shrink the house. I say that we, we, we shrunk the house to a 1250 square foot and to get our, get our prices down to where it was affordable. Cause the, as the rates increase, it kept pricing out our buyers. Like, you know, we, we, we lost half our buyers list overnight when the rates went up over 7%. It's just hard to cash flow, especially on a 20 year note. Didn't mean to interject. I just wanted, yeah, I just wanted an idea about numbers, but yeah, I think we were kind of getting to this, but why, why do you like working in, with investors? I want to talk about management because you guys do do management as well, but um, you know, why, why do you like working with investors on, on a bill to rent space? Like why have you chosen that as, as a path? Well, research looking into it one it's you have a higher demand you have a greater buyer pool like having wider audience to serve and it's also a business decision it's a numbers decision it's not emotional you don't have you don't have the buyer's dad inspecting you know looking under the stove you know what i mean there and there's a lot less when you're selling some of your first time for their first home that means something different to an investor buying a rental property and income property. Um, also, it's just this is so much easier to work with in the relationships. And then if you sell to a home buyer, you you might sell one house. If you're lucky, you'll sell the mom a house. But if you sell to an investor and they're making money, they'll keep buying houses from you. Plus, they don't care if the room is blue or green. Right. Yeah. We're <laughs> not asking for all the little dink, itty bitty changes that uh, owner Ox might want. I don't want a green or blue room, Adam, in my rentals. <laughs> but I don't even know what color my rentals are. Let's be honest. That's that's more. But yeah, great points. Like investors um, now, especially you have new construction, you know, less maintenance, things like this. As long as they're making money, uh, that's that's the thing, right? They come and back. And us, we do turnkey. We don't do custom work. We 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 you know we're a step. We're we're, we're not the cheapest guy on the block, but we're definitely not. Um, you know, custom pricing, you know, so we're able to go in and cookie cutter these things. And it's basically the same thing over and over again, which is another reason why we like infill lots, because we did a neighborhood of 20 houses. And I tell you, after you build about 10 of the same, it start looks, starting to look a little creepy. So you, you <laughs> can blend them in better when they're not all connected. Like Well, um, and to, I, I want to make sure this point is clear, though, by having this, like, you can reverse engineer your model, right? You're selling yeah. to an investor, you have this, 
you have your standard boilerplate build model because you've optimized that for, and this is what the investors need to know of what, why, why it makes sense to work with builder and builders and not just, you know, the average, the average builder off, off the, the shelf, right. Is because you're probably overpaying for a house where you're not getting like the most juice squeezed out of it on these type of houses. Now you're still putting in quality materials. I don't, I don't want to make, Correct. I don't want to make the mistake that you're, you know, Decre decreasing quality or cutting corners. We're but it's buying not, in bulk. We're using the same things. We're so you can be more cost effective to your investor, which means they ultimately get a cheaper house. They get better cash flow numbers because you're doing it at scale and you can have that, that model, right? Correct. Okay. And then, you know, we don't, we're, we're not reinventing the wheel each time. The houses aren't different. I mean, we have a couple different choices and sizes, uh, but, you know, outside of the four things that we build, we just, we do the same, we, we rinse and repeat. So, you know, we, we've done this for three years. So we've done it, you know, well over a hundred times and it, it's, we use the same colors. We use the same cabinets. We use the same granite. We use the same fiberglass. I mean, it's. Let's talk about uh, management, Mark. So how do you guys handle management? What are some key points to note? Like, what are some bragging points for you? And also challenge points possibly from managing in your area as far as like, give us some stuff about like average leasing times as well how you guys make sure tenants are you know stay in the house and and you know incentivized to stay things like that what average occupancy time anything you can tell us about management i think would be really interesting to hear okay so you know we we have we've, we've self-managed pretty much since day one and we've we've outsourced it three different times and it's crashed three different times because most property managers managers are not investors and they don't necessarily understand just because the, the, the tenant thinks this should be done, that it needs to be done that way. You know, so we and we have uh, we've been like we've been doing this for well over a decade. So we we refined it. We go through background checks, we do employment checks, we have the insurance in, income verification. Uh, typically what we find is when we have a nicer product, people, it's easier. It have, we have a lower, uh, leasing time because it's nicer than what the other units are available. And at the same time, because everything is brand new, people stay longer, you know, our average tenants, uh, renew at least once and, or right, I don't know the exact number. I have to ask my wife because my wife is the one that handles the management. Um, but most of our people are, I think our average is two and a half years versus, less than a year I've seen some other people on the turnovers. Tell us a little bit. I mean, I'm looking at this, the duplex that you're, you're bringing in. And quite honestly, I don't know if I've ever seen new construction with uh, rent to values as high as, I mean, it, it's almost one um, with these, which is insane. So tell us a little bit. I mean, is this a neighborhood where people. So, when you say almost one, just so we're, we're clear and I'm on the same page, what does that mean? Like the 1% rule that the investors saw. $250,000 house renting out at $2,500. Like like and it, this is why I like Oklahoma because anything, anything less than one and a half, you're not making any money. And we really, back when it was good, we were going, we were getting two. But anyway, so the one, <laughs> back to one. So tell us, I mean, just in general with these uh, neighborhoods, we kind of talked a little bit before, but what you mentioned, there's been a rent increase during COVID. How much more of an upside do you see to these rents? Like, is this someplace that's going to be like, you know, just $25 a month? Are you thinking that can be another like three, four or 5% a year? What kind of rent growth are we, you expecting? We run two to 3% to be conservative. Um, do we think we can get five? Probably. Um, but we try to keep it, we try to not do dramatic, dramatic increases because the, the small, I mean, we, we want to make sure we increase every year, but at the same time, I don't want it to be enough to make them want to move. So we, we target two to 3% on a, on an annual grade on an annual basis. And it sounds like, uh, from speaking with Scott, as you're sending inventory in and submitting it through the process of verification that there's some there is some some incentives that uh, are being offered as well and, and possibly some 
some warranties along. I mean, obviously you have the build warranty. I mean, it'd be we have our, to hear. Yeah, we have our, our year work uh, workmanship builder warranty on everything that we sell. Everything is brand new, so it has manufacturer warranties. Um, we are offering the first year of management uh, at no cost to the investor, and we will do it for 8% forward. Um, we have everything our, is, is listed to lease, so in, in a perfect world, we'll have at least prior to closing. Um, yeah. What was the other question? <laughs> no, that was it. I mean, that's, that's always my big question, right? It's like, how do I, how do I know that I'm looking at these numbers and that I'm going to be confident? Um, well, and we, we know, did, a, be... we talked about doing a, a rent number. Was it the rent guarantee for a year at, at 1800 because we're confident, but I don't have them leased at that yet. So, you know, if I'm off, I'll cover it. Yep. So there's there's the confidence right there. I mean, he's not behind be, it. <laughs> yeah, not going to be promising something he doesn't know he can uh, achieve there. So are these neighborhoods just kind of last question? Are these neighborhoods are they duplex neighborhoods um, no. for the duplexes, or are they kind of it's a duplex in an area that's primarily single family? Or so we we have a combination. I mean, it, it's in Sand Springs, there's more mixed use. There are several duplexes, but there's also a lot of single family. Um, a, a lot of what we do, especially in, in, in West Tulsa, we are in Tulsa, we purchase and rezone them so we can put in duplexes, duplexes in the single family zoning. Um, a little bit more time consuming, but it's better process or better product for all of us at the end. Fantastic. Well, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate you running us through the market. Uh, look forward to selling everything that you've got, uh, maybe even buying some of what you got. Um, I know uh, being from Texas, Oklahoma is kind of the, the competition, but we'll, uh, as, as you say with investors, it's all about the numbers. So if you want to check out what, uh, what Mark's bringing to us, head on over to rentsretirement.com and click on the inventory tab and you'll see the, the properties right there. Um, you know, that's at rentretirement.com. Click on the inventory. And you'll see it. If you have any questions for us that you want us to discuss in another podcast episode, please email those to podcast at rentretirement.com. That's podcast at rentretirement.com. Really appreciate the time you spent educating yourself today. We'll talk to you on the next episode. Thanks for watching the Rent to Retirement YouTube channel. Check out some of our other videos, like this one or this one here.